All right, in this lesson right here, what we're going to do is take a look at how we can go about expanding our path node network so that we can now account for doors. Because, of course, we need our bot to be able to use doors to go through the doors. So there's a couple of things that we need to do. And there's uh, two different ways we can do this setup here. And we'll take a look at both. So, Logan, if you will. All right, because in a second you'll see how we need to uh, work on the door just a bit to make the navigation network actually run through it. So I guess we can point out that uh, that is a door right there. As a yes. Of fact. Um, what it is, though, is just level has just been zoned, and that's currently the, uh, the zone portal. Right. But obviously, when we play the game, that becomes invisible, and we see just the normal door. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just extend the network out a little bit. So I'm going to add another path node in front of the door. Then I'm going to go ahead and cruise in inside where I've got a shield charger set up. This is going to be our first goal item that he's going to be trying to get to. We're going to have the bot run through the door so he can get to the shield. But uh, let's see. After he runs through the door, let me make sure there's the path node in between this. And, and after the shield that, charger itself is also going to serve as a navigation point. Right, right? and that's, that's actually a really good thing to point out, is that you don't want to add your own path nodes over in inventory items. Uh, like Jason just said, they act as they, technically they actually spawn a type of navigation point over them. That's why when we rebuilt and got the air, inventory spot doesn't have any path nodes to it. That's the actual actor, is an inventory spot. But it's the charger that's responsible for spawning that. Right. So what it is, is just these, these are automatically set up for navigation. So Let's go ahead and throw a couple more in there real quick, just so that we can see it branch off from that as well. Alright, I'm going to go up to this edge here, since we're going to be navigating off of this in later lessons, and just set up the path nodes over it real quick, so you can see the rest of the network. So add some path nodes over the edge, and this one kind of got dropped off to the side. Just do a bit of editing. Let me actually go in the top view real quick and find that one node, so I can move it over. So let me zoom in, and if I take static meshes off it's there, we actually probably want static meshes on, so we can see how it's lining up. But we don't need it. I'll use both mouse buttons and drag it up. Maybe something like that, just so it's added in the correct spot. Okay. Do a rebuild paths, and there we go. Now we've got a network being built all around this guy. Yeah, look at all the different variations we have. So it's it's definitely using this as a navigation point. Here we have the different directional area arrows over it, and then even building kind of a triangle around it. But notice this. Through our door, there's no paths. If I actually go and look on the other side, we've got all the paths outside of it. But no paths are connecting to the door. We don't even need to go in the game to test this because there is no path for the I mean, bot to take here. no path, you're not going to go there. Right, so the bot's simply not going to be able to see, basically not see into the door at all and not see that there's a, uh, an item to pick up. So we need to find some way of getting uh, networks to build through. Technically, the reason why it's not now, if we open up the doors, the door mover's properties and go under its collision, it's set to uh, path colliding, it's set to true. So it's going to see that as an object, just as though you would add a rock into the level. And, and I was trying to path node around that. You don't want to try to run through the rock. Yeah, that would be kind of strange. <laughs> so um, an easy way since this, uh, as far as the bot's concerned, the door could not even exist because it is set up on a trigger. It automatically opens. So if the bot didn't even think it existed, he could run through it just fine, mm -hmm. which we can simulate that by using a uh, path colliding. Let's set that to false real quick and now rebuild the paths. And that's one way of going about doing it. Now we have the paths built through it. So as now the bot would actually use the door. As a matter of fact, we can go ahead and load the level up and test. All right. So we'll confirm. And we'll also make sure that uh, the little workflow enhancements that were set up in the last lesson work just fine. Let's load this up. And... Play. Spawn in. Hit 7. Now I'm in ghost mode, so I'll jump back out. Spawn the bot. View the bot. Very nice. nice. Yes. So the bot's running around. Hey, straight to the door. Door opens. And now he's just running and around. And he, he so chose not to even run up to the ledge, too. Right, because there's... Now he's basically just going to pick some random point on the path. So throw the, throw the debug information back on. That probably would have been another good one to have bound as well. Just so that we can watch where it is he's wanting to go as he traces out his route. So, I mean... But, I mean, that is... All right, we're going to watch the green line there. So, this time he did decide to run over at that one point. Very cool. So, I mean, that's a uh, basic setup for a door. Now, I mean, I'll point something else out and then show a different way of actually setting up the door using a different actor now. Okay. So, I'll exit back out into Unreal Ed. And so, for a basic door, that works just fine, setting its path colliding to false. There's another way of going about that. If we go back into Properties and set uh, path colliding back to true... And rebuild real quick. So now we've got the same problem we had before. We don't have uh, paths between there. There's a different way we can go about setting this up. There's an actually an actor called Door that's uh, used to set up door type movers. If I open the actor class browser, go down to navigation point, there's Door. I'm going to add the door next to it and then center it up. So right click, maybe about there should work. So add the door. And let me see. Maybe move that around. I'm actually going to go ahead and throw my camera right in the center of the door so I can 
see how this is lining up. Also, if I zoom in, we have the door actor right over here. Here's our trigger that we were using. And uh, I guess I could point out the, uh, the setup of the door a little bit, too. The way this door is set up is trigger open timed, and this is the trigger that opens it. So when I open up the door's properties, we've got things under the door rollout, things like door tag, or uh, door tag and uh, door trigger. This door's tag is, well, we can select it real quick and go to events. Its tag is door E. So under the actual door actor, make sure it's set up for the correct door by going door tag, door E. And then for the trigger, the trigger's event is trig E. So let me copy that out, throw it onto the door, so door trigger. So now the door is, basically we're setting up, collecting some information for this door actor, so it knows how the door is supposed to operate. And um, once we have this set up, so we can rebuild at this point, because now we've set it up with the correct triggered door. It is initially closed. So what's the point of, of telling this, this door actor the door tag and the door trigger? Why do of, we need to give it this Of doing all this instead of just simply making it uh, yeah. path gliding false. Why exactly. go through the extra set of steps? This is because door actor can actually block, or the, the door actor can block this part of the path off. For example, if you had a door that was locked in a level and was open during gameplay or from a trigger elsewhere, you could actually set the navigation network up so that the bot wouldn't try to run through a locked door, but later when the door was unlocked and opened, he would be able to run through it. Okay. So that's where we've got uh, block when closed, true or false. So if this was like a locked door that we could open elsewhere, we could set block when... Uh, block when closed to true, and then the bot wouldn't navigate into, through it until it's open. Okay. So with that now, let me center it up this sentence just a little bit better, and now if I re rebuild paths, let me see if it calculates through, and let's see. It moved it around a little bit when I rebuilt there. It said it couldn't be based. It was basically just realigning it with the door a little bit. Okay. But now we have the paths building through it because it's actually building the paths through that door actor. So now it's irrelevant that the door is in place and even that the door is set to path colliding. Right. So with that, let's go ahead and load the game up real quick and check, okay. verify that this is all working. Okay. Play. Ghost out. And check this out. My key isn't working anymore. Mm. This is because um, the way Unreal Life works with... What we probably should have done is set Unreal Ed up to use a different any file, because as Unreal Ed decides, like it hits various intervals, mm -hmm. and it's to, to check if it should uh, say auto save the level. Also, when it does that check, it also resaves the any file. Right. So it overwrote my settings I had. So I could just um, set those back up, edit the any file, or just real quick use the commands over again. Yeah. I'm gonna do. Let's see. So add named bot gorge. I'm also going to hit escape now to pause this out so we can hold him there. We could also bind a key to players only. So I can real quick get the view player command in. But we've got the bot, and again, successfully navigating through the door. So that means uh, both ways were successful. Either in the case of a simple door, it would be fine if you just wanted to uh, set path colliding to false. Okay. If the door, it was the door's responsibility to to, uh, to move out of the way for players and bots. Or you set it up with a door actor, when the door actor would also add extra functionality if you need the door to be locked. Okay. So, with that, um, that pretty much wraps up this lesson okay. on interacting with doors. Okay, excellent. Thanks a lot, everyone.